Well, good morning, City Impact Church. It's Sunday again, and uh, something that's been on my mind all week and, and uh, felt to share on it. And, you know, um, sometimes you look at people and you can see something's not right or you can see heaviness on them. And uh, it's because they're carrying some things they're not meant to carry. And we're going to talk about that this morning, about things that we're meant to carry and things that we're not meant to carry. And uh, so I've titled the sermon this morning, What Are You Carrying?, right? Because you're going to carry something. You're always going to carry something. So you decide what you carry. I can't decide what you carry. I can, I can, I can give you things to carry, but you decide if you carry them, right? And so we're, we're basing this out of Luke 12, verse 22. And it says, And Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious and troubled with cares about your life as to what you will have to eat, or about your body as to what you will have to wear. And so the first thing we're not to carry is, well, we're not to carry cares. And especially the first one is to carry cares about ourselves, Like, how am I going to eat? How am I going to make it? How am I going to pay bills? How, you know, all those things. And you see people sometimes carrying those cares. You can, you can tell they are because they're down, or, or you can tell they are because they'll talk about it, you know, and, and they're worried. And, they, and so Jesus told us, he said, you know, you're not to carry that. You were never meant to carry that. And so we are to roll that on him and we are to allow him to take care of us. And so he was talking to them about, you know, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear and all those things. And he goes, you know, that is not for you to do. And, and then I'm not saying you don't work. We all work. We all have jobs. We all have paychecks and we all buy clothes. But he takes care of us. And we don't worry about that, you know. And so he said, you shouldn't worry about that. In Luke 12, 25 and 26, he says this. He says, and which of you, by being overly anxious and troubled with cares, can add a cubit to his stature or a moment, unit of time to his age, the length of his life? If then you're not able to do such a little thing as that, why are you anxious and troubled with cares about the rest? So he says, the first thing is that worrying or carrying cares will never add anything to you. If anything, it drains you of your strength. So caring about tomorrow's problems today doesn't change tomorrow's problem, doesn't fix tomorrow's problems, and on top of that, it takes away your joy today. It causes you to be weighed down today and to not have joy and peace. And so he said, you, when you begin to worry and to care, it will not add anything to you, it will actually take away from you. So how many of you know, we, I, I don't want stuff taken away from me, you know? Uh, in life, we want to grow and increase and multiply and, and, you know, in everything that we do, worrying doesn't do that. Amen? But having faith in God can do that. And so we are called to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to walk by faith not by worry, cares, and any of those things. So we are not to carry this. You know, it's like, I was going to do an example and get somebody to have a bag, you know, a backpack full of rocks and walk back and forth with it, you know. And the, the thing with carrying cares is after we carry it for so long, you don't even realize what you're carrying till you drop it. I remember I was, I was selling insurance and... Uh, I was pastoring and selling insurance, and, and I'd go out and, you know, drive and do what I'm supposed to do. And, and, and I kept hearing God saying, I didn't call you to sell insurance. And, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, God, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I, I know that I'm called to preach, but, but I'm just going to do it to, you know, to, to make that extra supplement so that, you know, we have food on the table and stuff like that. And, you know, I was trying to carry this, right? And, uh, and, I, and I remember I, I went out and I thought I was going to kill it. I was going up north. Nobody had gone there yet. I had a stack of leads, and it was French, and blah, blah, blah. And I went up there, and I worked for three days, and I had got a hotel room. I had the gas, the food, everything. And I went, and I made zero sales. And I remember when I was done going to God, like, what's going on? And he goes, I didn't call you to sell insurance. And I was like, okay, I get it now. <laughs> Not, oh, I didn't call you to sell insurance, so when you're done trying to make money with that. But what he was saying was, just trust me. I'll take care of you. That extra you need, I'll bring it to you. And, and I remember when I called and I, and I said, I'm done. I'm done selling insurance. And the weight that came off of me that I never even knew I was carrying. 
I mean, when I, when I finally said, I'm done selling insurance, I'm just going to pastor, it's like somebody took bricks off my back. And I was like, wow, I never even realized what I was carrying. Because the, the cares of, oh, where am I going to go this week? And I got no leads. And all of that was gone. And I could just focus on God. And God, you know, as you can see, didn't starve, praise God. And so Jesus wanted us to know that, that we're not meant to carry that. More than that, when you begin to carry cares of this world, not only will it affect you personally, it, it'll affect your health. Come on. You know, so many diseases are caused by being anxious or nervous or caring for stuff that you're not meant to care for. So your health, but it will also affect your position, where you are, what you do in life. Even uh, it'll cause you to not see the day that you're living in and the advance. And, you know, people get so carried away with cares. They get so weighed down by it that they don't realize it's time to win souls and there's an outpouring of God. And so here in Luke 21, 34, Jesus talks about that. He says, but take heed to yourselves and be on your guard, lest your hearts be overburdened and depressed, weighed down with the giddiness and headache and nausea of self-indulgence, drunkenness, and worldly worries. He calls it worldly worries. In other words, the word, the world should worry, but not us. And cares pertaining to the business of this life. And the last that... and lest that day come upon you suddenly like a trap or a noose. In other words, you won't realize that that day has come, that it's the day of salvation, that it's the day of outpouring. You won't even notice the day you're living in. You won't even know the time and the day you're living in, in God because you're so busy to look at what you are going through and what, you know, what things you should you know, try to figure out or try to carry or try to make happen instead of just obeying God and winning souls and doing what you're called to do as a believer and let God take care of the rest. You know, the Bible tells us we're in an army. And in an army, a soldier doesn't try to figure out how he's going to get food or clothing because he's enlisted and they take care. They clothe them. They feed them. They don't even have to wonder where that's coming from. That's coming from the one that enlisted them. It's the same with God. He said, you seek first the kingdom of God and and his righteousness and all these things that the world is looking for will be added to you. You don't got to worry about it and you don't have to carry that. And so if we're not to carry that, then what are we supposed to carry? Amen? Now watch this. Now, no, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. So how do I do this? How, and, and 1 Peter 5, 7 says this, casting the whole of your care all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on Him, for He cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. But you got to realize, who's the Him? It's Jesus. It's the Word of God. You've got to bring your cares to the Word. And, and here's what happened. You drop your cares and pick up the Word. Whew. You drop your cares and pick up the Word. So I take that care, whatever it might be, if it's for clothing or for food, if it's for finances, I take it to the Word, and then I pick up the Word concerning that. And then now I'm not caring anymore. I'm confessing the Word, believing the Word, filling myself with the Word, and that care is taken away by the Word. So now the Word is carrying the care instead of me carrying the care. Oh, praise God. And it's not only for finances. It's for your healing, your health, your family, your relationships. You bring that care to the Word of God. And then you let the Word of God carry that care for you instead of you carrying it. Praise God. All you do is pick up the Word. And that's why Jesus said, he said, he said give me your burden and then take my yoke upon you. My yoke is light. So carrying the Word is a lot easier than carrying the care. It's a lot lighter, a lot easier. As a matter of fact, the Word will bring you joy, will bring you peace, will cause you to be light. The Bible says you will mount up like wings, like eagles. Like, I mean, the Word is amazing. And so how do I roll my care unto God? I put it on the Word. And then I pick up the Word. Amen. And so we are to carry the Word of God. But here's what I heard this week in prayer. And it was so... I don't like to use the word weird, but it caught me off guard because I was just walking, praying in the Holy Ghost, and I just heard what you are to carry is the fire, the wood, and the sacrifice. 
And it kind of took me back to Abraham and Isaac where, you know, he carried the fire and the wood and he was the sacrifice and then God replaced it with uh, a lamb. But I mean, so I started praying about that and asking God, okay, what does that even mean? And well, the first thing, the fire, we are to carry the fire of God. We, we should have a fire in our belly. There should be a fire in us. We should be fiery people. Where we go, we should set fires everywhere that we go. Praise God. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Why? Well, Matthew 3.11 says, John speaking, he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So that fire comes in the presence of the Holy Ghost. So on a daily basis, we should be getting in the presence of God. First thing in the morning, we should be getting, you know, anointed of God and empowered by God. And it, it becomes a fire in our life. You know, the Bible says that our ministers are like flames of fire. That, that we should be fiery preachers, you know. We should be fiery people of God. We shouldn't be boring and down and depressed all the time. We should be full of fire. When we walk in the room, they should see a fire in our eyes, praise God. And when we speak, there should be fire released when we speak, and it should set the room on fire, praise God. And so we are to do this on a daily. So daily you should be spending time with the Holy Ghost. First thing in the morning, David said, early in the morning will I rise up and seek thee. You know, let that presence of God be with you. Second thing is the cross, the wood. Matthew 16, 24, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So, so the second thing is to deny ourselves. You know, I'm not my own. I was bought with a price. It's not about me. It's not about me having a nicer home, a nicer car, uh, a nicer guitar. Come on. It's about winning souls. It's about doing the work of the kingdom. We should be about doing the Father's business on a daily basis. It doesn't mean we don't do stuff for ourselves. It doesn't mean we don't work. But it means the mindset is, God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. I'm yours. I'm not my own. Right? And so it's seeking him, getting the fire of God, and then asking him for the direction. What, what's my job today, Lord? Is there somewhere you want to send me? Is there somebody you want to send me to? Is there somebody that needs to hear good news? Amen. Third thing is the sacrifice. And like I said, when Abraham and Isaac went up, Isaac was the sacrifice. And Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, beseech, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He says, you know, this is just the reasonable thing to do. Since he died for you, right, got beaten, whipped, scarred, I mean, horrible death for you with his body, the least you could do is give your body and be holy unto God. And, you know, and then he tells us how to do this in verse 2. He says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So not only do I spend time in the presence of the Holy Ghost and get that fire, and then that I ask Him where I'm going today, but I spend time in the Word of God, renewing my mind, causing my mind to be lined up with the Word of God. Because as a man thinks, so is he. So if, if, I, if I want to give my body a living sacrifice, I start by renewing my mind with the Word of God. Amen. And as you renew your mind with the Word of God, where your mind goes, your body will follow. Amen. You know, you see people, they let their mind go places that their body follows. That's not good. <laughs> but if you're in the Word of God, then your body's going to follow after holy things. Right? If you're in pornography, your body's going to follow after nasty stuff. But if you're in the Word of God, your body's going to follow after good stuff. If you're watching murders continually, after a while, your body's going to follow and want to commit murders. But if you're in the Word of God, continually renewing your mind with that, then your body's going to want to do good things. And so he said, bring your bodies a living sacrifice. Bring it to the Word. Well, that just brings us back to bring your cares to the Word. Everything, we bring everything to the Word of God. We allow the Word of God to take over our mind, our thinking, our intellect, so that we can do the things that God called us to do. And we will have a victorious life if we do this. In Joshua, I'm closing with this, Joshua 1.8, he said, This book of the law 
It shall not leave nor depart from you, but thou shalt meditate in it day and night. Then you will make yourself prosperous, and then you will be of good success if thou shalt meditate and do what the Word says. And so as we begin to meditate the Word and do the Word, the cares just fall to the ground. You know, it's like water off a duck's back. After a while, you don't even care anymore. <laughs> you know, and, and, and you know, there's nothing wrong with not caring. Right? And it's not making it that we are not moved by people's hurts and people's things. But we don't carry that. We carry the word. And so we can bring healing to those that have wounds and that have things instead of just bringing them pity. See, pity just says, oh, that's too bad. But compassion says, let me help you out of that. And so we are to walk in compassion, not pity. Amen. Well, maybe you're listening and you're saying, like, I, I'm, I'm a carrying machine. <laughs> I carry all kinds of stuff. And I've never really asked Jesus. Maybe you've never even asked him to be Lord of your life. If that's you this morning, or maybe you walked away for years and you tried to do it on your own and now you're coming to a place and saying, I need you again. Either way, I would love to pray with you. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10 that if you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died for you and rose again and that you confess him as your Lord, you'll be saved. And so I'd like to pray with you this morning. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. I thank you that he died and rose again for my sins. Forgive me. From this day forward, Lord, I'm going to serve you with all my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, we would love to welcome you into the kingdom of God personally. We are here Sundays, 9 and 11 a.m. in Moncton. If you live in the area, we'd love to meet you. If not, just fire us off an email or something. Just let us know you made that commitment. God bless you.